host of the talk show. I'm your host, Travis Garrison, where we talk in sports and life. I got a special guest with me today. I got Miss Crystal Smith. She is the mom of two great athletes that went to the Matha, that goes to the Matha right now. It's definitely a pleasure to have you on my show. I absolutely love having a conversation with parents, um, especially parents of athletes in regards to their process of things they went through and you know because my mom went through similar situations so it's always good to have the input of the parents of these athletes these great athletes and some of the things they may face that some of these parents I hear may not know about or or need to know about so that's definitely I appreciate your time this morning I appreciate being here I appreciate the opportunity I see that sign back there, think first. I'm like, oh Lord, let me not say anything. <laughs> Just off the rip. Let me think before I speak. But okay, all right, let's go. Let's go. We ready. No, no, you 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 good. You good. You know, you just, you know, we, we good. So so you you have two boys that went to the one went to the math and one is currently at the math, correct? Yes, yes. Um, my first son, Noah, he went in 2014 and um now he's at Bowie State. And okay. my second now is Zion Smith. He's O-line, D-line coming into the math. Um, and we're just excited for the opportunity, ready to make history. Right. And, and you're from you're from Delaware, right? You're from Delaware. Yes. Yes. From-, from Delaware. Um, I actually started my boys in the sports just for physical fitness something to do getting them off of the video games and you know getting them outside in a structured activity and they just took to it they enjoyed it so much that they actually look forward to practice they look forward to training of course they love to play the games and to travel to the um various cities to play so it worked out for us um I got hooked up with Mike Anderson with Grassroots at Gilman in like 2012 when he first started putting together that whole vision of taking Maryland sports to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea. I love the people that I was talking to in Maryland that were helping us achieve our dreams. So I just stuck with it for both boys. And now we are one of three recruits for the class of 2026. Wow. And it's on and popping. He has um, game changers on Wednesday. We'll be at the University of Maryland. Okay. So that's an event with Loxley Loxley and um, the Under Armour. Oh, Plank, Kevin Plank. Yes, yes. Nice, My son nice. Zion loves him. He loves talking to him. So I'm like, I can't wait to see what that collaboration um, comes up with because Kevin is actually, uh oh, Kevin is actually interested in seeing Zion. So right. they have good conversations. So, you know, stuff like that is like once in a lifetime, like you would never know what happens until you actually have the courage just to step outside of your comfort zone and see what's out there for your children. Absolutely. And um, I mean, you, you, like you said, you come from Delaware and, and coming up here to Dematha. I mean, um, obviously I'm a Dematha guy, so I'm, I'm not biased or anything like that, but I mean, for you to make that sacrifice and, and putting your kids in that situation. And then I love it, what you said in, in regards to just getting your kids involved in sports because of the physical fitness, just to get them healthy and to keep, to keep them active. Yes. Um, I know that's you. So uh, hold on real quick. Are you one of those moms that's on the sideline that's, that's screaming like, that's my boy, that's my baby. Are you, are you one of those parents? Are you? No, <laughs> I'm retired. <laughs> oh, so you used, to, you used to be one of those moms, huh? I was with all of it. <laughs> I was, if, if they went down, I ran out the bleachers. Oh, I'm on the field oh, with my own first aid kit, calling my own golf cart, coming oh, to get my child met back. Oh, I'm retired now. Second time around, I'm, I'm a lot more calm. Oh, I don't have anything to say to the referees. I'm not telling the coaches how to coach. <laughs> I'm a videographer, photographer. 
Make it sure he's hydrated. I am retired. I don't even oh, want to yeah. do team mom anymore. <laughs> I'll help out all I can, but I'm retired. Yeah, I don't have it anymore. <laughs> It okay, might I just, come I just, out though. You never know. It might come out again. But I think I'm retired. <laughs> you think you retired? And I that's, think that's, so. that, that, that's also awesome, know like that that passion. You know, um, obviously, you know, me being an athlete, and you know, you to hear the moms in the in the crowd, and you know, sometimes the mom talking trash to me about <laughs> about things. So I mean, we, I, I loved it, but um, that's great. But like you said, in regards to you know keeping your kids healthy and and the physical fitness and then like I say even your sacrifice from coming from Delaware to going to the map so what I know Mike Anderson is my guy that he was he was a mentor of mine you know obviously the math the Maryland guy I went to the math I went to Maryland um great guy you know been through been through a number of different things in regards to on the field off the field so a person like that being around a kid that's been in, some, in, in his shoes. I mean, he was all American in high school, and you know, I mean, in basketball, you know, I mean, in, in football, on a cover of Sports Illustrated, every everything. So he's he's a a a, a perfect example for these kids to to give a feedback to, or to, to, you know, just to be like a mentor to them because he's been there, done that, and where right. where, where they where they're trying to go, you know. So, um, I knew what he, I knew about what he was doing and and the start of it and where it all led to it and all the things that came about of it. Um, so I'm, did he tell you about, did he tell you about the math or how did you find out about the math through him or? Well, no, well, sort of, kind of, um, they kept having events at the math, uh, but they had to be, you know, they had events at St. John's, good council. Um, my son Zion played for Maryland Heat. So yeah. we were based at St. John's. Okay. And, you know, pretty much that's a, a feeder for right. St. John's. Of course. But St. John's is stacked. Right. And they're they're they have a stack behind their stack. Right. So in order for my son to have the best shot at having the opportunity, the experience of a lifetime in high school, I I thought that Dematha was a better fit because my son is humble. Mm a little reserved, like he likes to like scope the situation out. He's not too right. flashy, like we're like opposites. <laughs> so St. John's, and I love him. I love mm -hmm. Coach Bird. That's my mm -hmm. brother. Uh, Just like Mike is my brother. Uh, St. John's is flashy. Uh, St. John's is all, you know, they all that, they on right. top. Right. But the math of, is that slow and steady wins the race type thing. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. no matter what, their athletes come out on top year after year after year after mm -hmm. year. You mm -hmm. might, things might get difficult. Right. You might, injuries, grades, anything like that. If you apply yourself and you stay the course, you become successful. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. Without all that glitter and glam, it still becomes the catalyst for you to do whatever you want in your life. Right, right. absolutely. And that really fits Zion. Plus, there's no girls. <laughs> so, 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 something I, I struggled with at first, but you know, it, I got used to it. But go they ahead. They right down the street. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you know, we got to we got to keep we got to stay focused. Right, right. So as long as he was with it, then I was with it. You know, it, yeah. it was a good fit. Coach Will Weathers, he wanted Zion for the last three years, mm -hmm. and I kept saying, you know, in my head, I'm like, Bird going to kill me if I don't do mm -hmm. Saint. Uh, Bird is right. going to kill me, but I like the math. But I like the right. way they move. Like, you know, right. it's like quiet money, you right. know? Right, right, right. So Will just kept saying, just come over, just come over. I'm like, I know what it is. I had one right. go through. I, I know what your campus is. So why right. you keep trying to make me go over there? Will, like, right. Yeah. Right. We finally got over there, brought my husband and Zion, and we w met with McGregor. Yo, it blew my mind. His presentation blew my mind. No glitz, no glam, no cameras, no, you know what I'm saying? It was just like common sense mm -hmm. why 
you would choose the math of for Zion. Right. But it's right. not a fit, you know, of course, it's not a, everything is not a fit for everybody, but exactly. it makes so much sense. Plus, they have a lot of seniors this year. Mm. So it's open up. Like, it's, right. it's whatever. If, if he want it, he can get it. Right. It's up to him. Right. And and I tell people all the time and they can call it bias or whatever, but because I went through the situation, I went to the math, I've seen the process and this is before they even had the new gym. So I didn't go there when they had the new gym, new facility, the Nike, we was Reebok, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had Coach Wooten who was old school and so there was no glitz, glamour, everything about the math was old school, the gym is old, you know, everything, but, you know, like you said, how they move. And the perseverance and, and what they teach us in regards to, you know, I learned a lot of life skills going to Damatha. I got a lot of my closest friends are from Damatha. You know, we, it's a, it's, I tell everybody all the time, it's literally a brotherhood, literally. Right. Like, and 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 when I mean, you start to say that to people that didn't go there, they're like, oh, you just biased or because you went, no, because I can go places like this. Oh, what's up, Travis? I'm class of 88. Oh, I'm class of 70. You, I get that all the time in all type of professions. I mean, I'd, I'd be surprised some places I go and the guy like, oh yeah, I know you with the, the math, right? It's, it's literally, I don't care what year you went there, what sports you played is that connection. And um, like like you said, that willingness to overcome, you know, like, you know, even though we're the math, but we, we always consider, I consider us the underdog because uh, people always was coming after us or people were always right. like, oh, it's just because you're the math. That's what we do. Nah, we put that work in. And like you yes. said, it's that grueling work. There's nothing flashy about it. The, like I said, they just got the new facility with the new weights and all that. But we was down up in the basement where they got the old school weights and all that. Regardless of how successful they were, championships, national championships, all these things, we was grueling, we was grueling it out in the basement. No locker room, no nothing. Right. <laughs> so, so it was all old school stuff. But like you said, it's no girls. That was a challenge for me. I'm from Sulin. Went to a <laughs> middle school with, you know, I'm from, not the, it ain't the hood, I wouldn't say that, but it was, you know, we grew up kind of rough. So it was, you know, going to the math or with no girls and anything like that, it was a transition for me. But it was it was different, something I had to get used to, the type of people that went there, the, mix, the mixture of everything. Mm -hmm. um, but in the day, I mean, it was the best thing ever. And, and it's funny, when I was there, I was like, oh, man, I'm never coming back. And I can't wait to get out. I got a uniform. You got to shave. This is when we had to shave and everything. You got to shave her. And then next thing you know, I'm out of there. I'm always back there now. I'm always back there, always around the, the, the program because of it's, that, it's the family, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And then on top of that, prayer. Like, I'm always praying over my boys and just believing that God has ordered these steps. He's ordered right. this path for us. And right. everything that has been put in front of us, it's just like, that's just the enemy trying to tear us down. But I know that what I'm doing, glorifying God, glorifying God and making sure that our children know that this is the only way to get into the kingdom right. is by putting God first and mm -hmm. also doing what we're supposed to do here on earth for others. And so right. that brotherhood, I think would open up so many doors that he doesn't even know are possible to Absolutely. become the man that he needs to become to do the things that he needs to do to serve the Lord right. and his community. Right, absolutely, absolutely. And and like you said, that's, that's definitely key, man. I, I, my dad was dad is a pastor. My mom having interest. I was raised through that oh, whole you're process. A kid. Yeah, I'm a PK. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a PK. So I I I was raised like that. You know, keep God first. If it's my mom was always saying, if it's meant to be, it's going to be. I used to always scream NBA, 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 NBA. Okay, yeah, I get that. But if it's meant to be, it's going to be. You know what I mean, my my mom wasn't. I had two other brothers that played basketball, but she never was that mom that really knew the game. So she would be like trying to tell me things about the game and you know you should have did this shit i'm like what are you even talking about right now but because she was she was trying but you know i know some of the things that she went through as a parent and you know been a highly recruited athlete and going through that process like i said my brothers played but they didn't get that quite level i was at i mean they was recruiting everything but the level i was recruited at my mom never seen that 
So it was a it was it was new to her. You know, I have a couple of cousins that coached at the college level. Um, and then, you know, Coach Wooten at the time would kind of help her. And then, you know, I had Mike there. Um, but she, it was a, a, a it was new to her. It was something that she'd never seen the way these coaches, you know, would try to track her down or get in touch with her or, you know, she'd be at a salon. You know, one of the coach's moms went to the salon too. So she, the mom would try to like get the mom. It was the, the, the thing. So as a parent, what are some of the things that you've learned through your journey having boys that played the sport? And what are some things that shocked you? And what are some things that's like, man, that you would tell other parents to watch out for, other moms? Because a lot of times, honestly, you know, I mean, you guys are blessed to have the mom and the dad, but some athletes don't have the luxury of having you know, both parents or even the dad in the pictures, mostly the moms are the ones that's, that has to learn on the way. So what are some of the things that you've learned that you like, man, you know, if you could tell another mom or another parent, like, if you watch out for this or be careful of this, or this is what I went through that before you guys, you know, may not have to go through that. First of all, I think you need to make sure that your student athlete really wants wants the you know once the the sacrifice the the work that goes into this not just you living it through your child but actually that child wants it a lot more than you do because it's it's hard trying to get your child up every single day to do something that they don't want to do so and, and you might have to take some time um get them to go into other activities like my son um he stars in plays he plays basketball he plays viola like i i made sure that he knew that there were other things that you can do besides football but whatever right. you do you're going to be the best at it like that's right. our goal we can't right. be average if I'm not going to let you come in this house with a C on your report card, I'm not going to handle you being an average athlete right. either. Right. So after you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that that's what your child wants to do, then you have to get him with the best trainer in your area because they have to have a good IQ. So we'll just stick with football. He had to have a good football IQ as far as I'm concerned in order to be part of that 1% that actually makes it, you have to be excellent in every single area. So we had to get the best trainer. We had to make sure he had a good diet. He's six four, 300 pounds. Wow. I took him to uh, DuPont. That's the big pediatric hospital in Delaware. And I'm thinking I had to put him on a diet because there was nothing that I could do. He was in that 99th percentile, like wow. no matter what. And I'm thinking that it's me, you know, so I'm pushing fruits and vegetables. I'm pushing water. I'm pushing physical fitness. That's why we did the football. Right. And doctor was like, that's just, that's just how it is. Like wow. he hasn't even hit puberty. He doesn't even have any hair on <laughs> anywhere wow. yet. Wow. So change the diet get a trainer and only listen to people that have made it. I can't listen to family members that haven't made it, friends that have opinions. I, I can't listen to anybody. And I really don't listen to people that have made it. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> because it's my child, Right. what you want to do, how you want to do it. Right. And that's, that's, you know, that's how we're going to keep going. But he had to have the training. He had to change his diet and he had to figure out what do you want to do? Okay. You want to play for Pac-10 SEC. Okay. Right. Well, we can't do that from Delaware. We might be able to. Right, right, right. There's a chance, you know, yes, there's social media. Yes. We could travel to several camps and that, this, that, and the third, right. but in order for me to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I've done all that I could to get him to the Pac-10, to the SEC, or wherever mm -hmm. he wants to play, I had to get him into a middle school program 
that would give him the football IQ and the Rolodex to get him to the high school. So a lot of people say little league doesn't matter. Little league matters because that's where you start to build your Rolodex. And that's also Mm -hmm. where you get to see if your son is willing to do the work. You have Mm -hmm. to practice every single day. There's Mm -hmm. no days off. Right, right. And it's not even, you're not even, you don't even want to name it as practice. It's just life. Right, right. Like you have to work at it every single day. You got to talk about it every single day. Right. It's only 1% that make it. So, Absolutely. and then you have to remember like the mental, You, you I, I read a lot about the guys that didn't make it mm-hmm. and what they go through mentally. So you want to make sure that the child is stable mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, because they get attacked by, they get attacked every single way during this process. And it goes so fast. That's another reason why you don't have a day off Mm -hmm. because it goes so fast. Signing day is going to be here before I know it. So I have to make sure that he's ready in every single way, making sure I have a good team of trainers, coaches, you know, I'm, I'm at the math. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Like we here. Yeah. 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 As long as he remains humble, he listens and he works hard. I don't think he's going to go wrong. Right. I'm just going to stay prayed up and get him there early and pick him up late (laughs) and make sure that he does everything that he's supposed to do for him to get where he wants to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and you said a lot, a number of good, I mean, that was great advice that you just gave. Um, That's, that's really good advice. I think more parents need to take that, um, that type of mindset because I've seen parents, I, I, I know kids, that were forced into playing a sport uh, because their parents were there vicariously, vicariously through them. And like I said, man, me being an athlete, and people ask me all the time, your, your son go play basketball do them? Look okay, here, honestly, if they don't want to, it's cool. Like you said, make sure, right. I mean, I want, I, my mom always tried to get me to try different things. She wanted me to play baseball, but I was scared that the, base, the ball was going to hit my hand. I was, you know, I mean, I, she wanted to try these different things. I tried football, that's not for me. You know, I, mean, I found that out through the, you know, through that process, but I tried it. Um, right. I wish I would try more things. You know, I did a little bit of tennis. I did a little bit, a little bit of everything. Um, but like you said, it's not for everybody. Like my my son, like my my oldest swims, and you know, he did soccer and played football. My my middle boy, like he don't want no type of parts of no type of sports. He tried basketball because he knew dad played basketball, but he was that's not him. He's more into science and art and those things, and I'm okay with that. My daughter, she's right. super active. She's in everything. Like she just, she, she's gonna probably be the one that I like, actually follows behind me. But it was nothing like you said. Don't if they're not into it. Yes, I want them to try it, and I tell them that they're okay. If if you try it for a week and you don't like it, can we back you out? But if we pay for this and you say you want to do it, oh, you're gonna see this thing all the way through because we don't. You're not gonna give up. We're not doing that. We're not going to just, we, we asked you a number of times if you wanted to do it. You kept saying yes. So we're going to finish it. Then after this, you don't have to do it. You, you're you done. But like you said, like, I know parents that, that force their kids to, to, to play a, sp- a certain sport because uh, they see what KD are, LeBron, and all these football guys. And, all, and I'm like, that's probably the worst thing you can do, especially nowadays, because things are that, like I said, I'm not that old, but like the, when I was coming up, all these trainers wasn't around. We didn't have that. I didn't have a trainer. You know, I, I it it helped me a great deal if I had one, but I didn't have a trainer. I had brothers that played, so I learned everything from off the court or watch the Michael Jordan tapes or you know, but I didn't have an actual personal trainer. I, I mean, like I said, if I would have, things would have been a lot better than what they were. But you know, now everybody has trainers. You have now everything is social media now. So if you want to be seen, you post it on YouTube, you post it on the mixtape on Instagram. It's a lot. So now when you when talking to these kids, like you say, you have to want it because some of these kids out here working every single day, sometimes twice a day, and sometimes yeah. because they because they want to do it. Then you have the other part where the parents are like, "Okay, you have to go work out. You have to go train." 
if you if it's like that, then it's gonna be tough because when you get into these next levels, even at a school like Damatha, I tell parents all the time, I said, look, yes, it's Damatha, and your your kid is this tall or this big or whatever, that's great. But don't get it twisted because they got a number of kids that's coming in just like him. Yeah. Highly recruited, highly ranked. So what's gonna separate them? From the, the the pack, what's going to so it ain't gonna be no like on oh, the cakewalk because I'm I'm this tall, I, I'm, I'm this tall, I'm this big, I'm this not that doesn't even matter at all. You have to be talented because I, I I mean I played with a guy that was seven feet and he ain't really getting no time. You know <laughs> right. So, so, so it's, it's 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 not because of your size it's because of your willingness just want to work because this the school right here is a great school but these dudes they want it. You know, mm-hmm. and you have to go out there and prove it and you have to put that work in, you know. Even when I went there, I was, you know, ranked the number two eighth grade in the country. So I walked in like, oh yeah, I'm but we have on the ninth we had a tenth grader that was top ten, top five in the country. We had an eleventh grader that was top five, top ten in the country. Yep. We had an eleventh grader that was top fifteen, top five. We had seniors that was number one, number two in the country. So they don't care who you are coming in. That's cool, but you gonna have to work. You gotta put that right. work in. And that's what things I tell parents all the time about the math is like it's a great school. But you have to go in there and 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 be able to get through everything because you got to put that work in. If you don't put that work in, they go. It's gonna get you gonna get weeded out. You get lost in the sauce because you have parents and you have kids that want to go to the math and that's passionate about the game and that wants to succeed and they're gonna do everything they can and possible. Um, so like what you're saying, that that's definitely great. Your 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 take on it. Um, and if you have kids that that want it and and have parents like you and your and and, and your husband. I mean, that's great. I mean, it's, like you said, then you go to the math, that's like a great recipe of, su- of success right there. Like you said, yep. you, 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 you're you doing your part as a parent, but you also believe in the coaches and the staff and the school enough that they know that when they're there, they're going to be taken care of at the highest level because that's just how we operate. But right. that's, like you said, that, that, that's a, that's great advice, like I said, that you gave the parents um, at such at that level. So, I mean... So, so with, the, with, 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 with on your on your end in regards to when it comes time for recruitment for college, what was what was that like for you, especially with your oldest? Because that was the first time you actually went through that process in regards to the recruitment process and trying to pick a school. So, what was that like for you going through that the first time? And now you know, now you know, going into the second time with your youngest son, what to look out for and what to be prepared for. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my first son was and is a handful mm-hmm. he is the best he was the best wide receiver he played defense he he, he was the best athlete period mm-hmm. um girls got him into a lot of trouble girls got him into a lot of trouble him thinking that he knew what was best for him Mm -hmm. got him into a lot of trouble um social media was overwhelming Mm -hmm. got him into a lot of trouble so that's what dropped him down to d2 Mm -hmm. i did not give up on my son Mm -hmm. we're gonna be the we're gonna go to the best d2 then if, if right. that's where we at, we're going to go to the best. And that's how we ended up at Bowie State with Coach Damon. Mm-hmm. Love Coach Damon. And um, he really made me feel as though I could believe him. He knew the challenges that my son faced. Mm-hmm. And he was actually willing to help him. I don't know if he knows that I know that he set my son up with his nephew to be his roommate in that first year Mm -hmm. to babysit him is what I believe. When, when I put that, cause I'm an investigator, I had to know (laughs) my child was going to be rooming with. Absolutely. So when I knew that I was like, Oh yeah, we, we made the right choice. We made the right. right Right. Um, but you know, that, that first child, unfortunately, sometimes he can be, the experiment (laughs) right right yeah I mean I trust me I definitely know so I learned from him um to keep Zion away from social media as much as possible Mm -hmm. 
to keep Zion away from girls as much as possible, mm -hmm. to keep him as humble as I possibly could, you know, mm -hmm. not to gas his head up. Right. To, um, you know, don't push him to show off. Don't push him to talk too much. You know, just let your craft show who you are. Right. And um, you know, you you just you you live and you learn. You live and I, you learn. Absolutely. And you you like I said. Like I said, thank God that I didn't grow up in this era. Like you said, we got the social media, yes. all those things. Okay, because you got, like I said, you got kids that's losing scholarships over social media. You, like you said, you got the access to the girls and the DMs, and I'm like, I mean, my teammates, my former teammates, we talk about this stuff all the time. Even I was at Maryland, I'm like, man, thank God I didn't have social. And that's when Facebook was just coming out. I'm like, thank God because of yo, I missed like, all those pictures. You don't have no pictures. Uh, no proof. No, no, exactly. People taking pictures and you like and, and the way I'm talking to myself, the way I was moving at the time, like like in high school I was good in regards to the focus level, but when I got to college, that's when I totally just like sidebar everything because I went to all boys school. You know what I mean? I was contained in a sense. Right. Yeah. Um I would go, I would go from school to home, from school to home. That was my day. I didn't have a girlfriend till like my senior year. So I was you know, not because I didn't want one, I wanted one, but it was just the, the schedule. The schedule was right. what it was. But when I went to Maryland, I stepped on campus and I was who I was and I had access to anything unlimited. I mean, and then you don't have nobody like saying you can't do this. I mean, you had your coaches, but it wasn't like babysitters. You like literally had free reign and they just won a national championship. And That's you are who you are. Part. It's, and, and so it's so it's, it's but it's, it's 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 this thing. So I got caught up in the world when I tell people all the time. And I caught up in this world when the girls, the parties, the drinking, everything. And it was just like it sidetracked me from what I was really there for. And I just couldn't get out that whirlwind because people don't know that it's really it's that it's that crazy. You know what I mean? It's that it's that crazy. So every time I talk to young men now or, or women, whomever, or whoever have a dream or a passion, it's like you have to understand like all the work you put in before you got there, all the work you put in and how bad you want something. Like NBA was my thing. That's what I wanted. But okay, you can say you want it, but what are you doing to, I'm not saying that you can't go to college and have fun. I'm not saying that. But at the same time, there has to be a balance and the balance has to be like this. It can't right. be like, not, no, you, if you really want to make it, then that's your number one thing. You, yes, you have to, you know, get some free time and have some fun and nothing crazy, but you have to, know the difference and I didn't I couldn't I, I tried to balance it out or but it was just super super hard for me because it was something I wasn't prepared for I didn't want to prepare for everything that came with that lifestyle and um but that's going through that and then I go back and tell other young men it's like look even with the social media I didn't have it but I have it now but I I talk to coaches I talk to NBA people I talk to all these different people they're like look man, I don't have to do no investigation because they spend so much money on investigating FBI stuff backgrounds they don't have to do that no more. Go around their social media page, who they friends with, what are they doing, what kind of pictures are they taking, what are they doing their pictures. It's it's crazy right now. Yeah. So and I and I've seen stories of people that lost scholarships because of something they posted on Instagram, and that could be not who they are, but because they posted it or their friends posted it or they right. were seeing this. And because, like I said, things are so tight now. Everybody has a trainer. Everybody has mixed it. So any little thing will get you cut from the list, and it'd be it's unfortunate, but that's just what it is now. So right. yeah, these kids have a harder time now. It's tougher now because of so many distractions, so many pressures, so many different things. But at the end of the day, if you really want something bad enough, you're going to willing to keep your nose clean, sacrifice as much. It's not easy, but they don't get into that next level. Ain't easy either. But you you willing to put that work in? And I tell kids all the time, even with the thing first time, that stuff was for me. You know, mm -hmm. thinking first and stuff that I wasn't doing that. So I lost a lot of opportunities because of the choices that I made. So now when I go talk to these kids, I say, look, you have, you have, to, ask, you have to ask yourself, you have to ask yourself how bad you want something and what are you willing to do to sacrifice to get to where you want to go to? It's not going to be easy. Nothing in life that's worth it is. But you right. have to be, you have to, you have to put that work in on and off the court field, whatever it is, you know? So, you know, you give them that information and do what they want with it. Because when they're in college, when they all, been an adult, I mean, they're technically an adult and it's a business now, it's up to them, but give them the knowledge and they, they do what they want with it. Um, 
But yeah, it's 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 I'm like, man, the area you guys are in is tough. It's tough. It is. It's tough it is. But you know. And I'm personally personally, he can go to whatever school he wants to, but personally, I'm looking at programs that have a good mentorship program for mm -hmm. the student athlete. I would like for him to be in like a dorm where it's just student athletes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, my, my mom don't want everything in the world. I mean, there are, don't get me wrong. I know with the football side, I think they do have uh, uh, facilities just for the football players. Because I, I know some guys, even when I was on game, it was just the, the building was just for the athletes or the football players. So they do have, things are a lot better now. In regards to the, the mental the mental state of things with the you know uh, people that's helping with the therapy and the mental aspect of things and they structuring things a different way and so things are different in behalf of you know favoring the, the athlete and keeping them as much as possible but at the end of the day it's still up to the athlete it's still up to the the the, the student athlete <clears throat> and the yeah. decisions and choices that they make so I mean all we can do as parents and as mentors and as coaches or whatever is give them the knowledge, give them the foundation, help them out as much as possible. But at the end of the day, these kids have choices. And I can, I, like what I do now is I go and tell the kids, I'd be totally transparent about things I've been through on and off the court, you know, things I faced and they do what they want with it. But I, they have that knowledge now. Some people just don't know. They don't know, right. but once you, once you give it to them after, after that, it's, it's up to them. I also tell him that his brain is not nearly developed yet. like. The man's brain doesn't develop probably until about thirty. <laughs> so. That's true. That's true. That's 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 true though. That's that's definitely true. So whatever yeah. you're thinking is a good idea, you need to run it by a couple of people that have been there, mm. done that first. Like, right. Right. but it's crazy. Some of the schools that we toured with my older son, they would have the hot girls do the tours, and I'm like, mm -hmm. bruh, of course. Of course. You know that's his weakness, right? Really? That's what that's you do. That's the whole point. They're trying to, do, whatever we got to do to get your kid to go to our school, we're going to do. We know what they like. We know that sometimes it's the female, sometimes it's the clubs, and sometimes it's other things. So it's just, I mean, like I said, I try to be as transparent and, and don't shut code nothing for nobody, parents, kids, whatever, because it's, it's a beautiful thing, the gift that we have, you know, in regards to being an athlete and, and, the opportunities that they can come from it, you know, being a basketball player, being a football player, all these these gifts that, you know, was given from God in regards to being athletic, you know, that it shouldn't be wasted regardless of somebody's selfishness or greed, you know. So that's why I'm so passionate about doing what I'm trying to do is because I don't care. I don't want anything. I don't need anything from that. It's just more so about I just want – I know what happens when you don't make it. I know what happens when you lose an opportunity because you made a bad choice. I know how that feels. And yes. if I can forbid, if I can keep people from going through that same feeling as much as possible, then I'm going to do it. But at the end of the day, all I can do is just give the knowledge. I can't force nobody to do anything. I can right. just give the knowledge and the education. They can do what they want with it. But I try to give it to a point that they can feel whatever emotion or feeling I felt when I went through whatever I went through. So, um, but like, like parents like you is much needed. You know, even information that you give, things that you've been through yourself, um, I think it's, 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 it's huge. And I think, you know, you're definitely going to be able to help a lot of other parents and moms um, out there that's going through stuff <clears throat> that your kids are going through or been through. So, I mean, it's a beautiful thing what you're doing. And even having this conversation with you, you know, is definitely uh, the knowledge is key. So I definitely appreciate you and your time and all your sacrifice and just your mindset and how you're doing it. We need more parents like you. Um, and they, they need you. I don't, I don't know how you utilize the knowledge that you have. I know having this conversation, I know you was a, a teen mom and but you retire from that. <laughs> but definitely more moms and, and parents need to hear what you, you know, your, what things you have to say and, and your knowledge and experience that you've been through. So, I mean, hopefully this helps this conversation on here. And you joining the Crossover Talk show with me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. yes. so I definitely appreciate you. And, you know, obviously your, your, your kids are like my little brothers now because they the math of your brotherhood. So that's just how Absolutely. it works. Um, so now I definitely appreciate your time and, and everything. And, you know, definitely would love to have you come back on the show, yes. you know, give updates and just, you know, just 
the things that, that see see how the 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 others are doing and you know just the updates you know so i definitely appreciate your time absolutely absolutely i'm grateful thank you very much for having me on i appreciate you and i will definitely be back yes and i always want to help others like every time someone calls me for advice or you know i'm always willing to help always willing to give people my contacts you know you're not going to take from me you're not you know what i'm saying what's what's for me is for me Absolutely. So I, Absolutely. I don't like, for, oh, I'm not going to give him this number because I don't, yeah. no, right. no. What right. God has for me is for me, no matter what I, you know, what I do with the information, I'm not going to hide it under a rock. So I'm Absolutely. willing to help everyone because we all need to get there. We need to make this next generation better than the last. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I know any upcoming football players or moms or whatever, Give me your information and I'm gonna let them know. Even social media, I know you on social media, right? Yes. How, how can they contact you if they want advice? If, if it's not through me, how can they get in contact with you, Miss Smith? Yeah, so on Instagram is at it's crystal clear at I T S C H R I S T L E C L E A R. On Facebook, it's Crystal Taylor Smith. So, and on Instagram, it is Tony, I mean, on um, Twitter is Tony's first wife, but it's his only, you know, he ain't going to. <laughs> <laughs> Period. <laughs> no, that's, that's awesome. Like I said, I definitely appreciate your time and you taking time out your, your busy morning and um, like I said, all the sacrifices that you're making for your kids. I know they're your kids, so you can do it anyway. But even the knowledge that you gave today um, is definitely key and a lot of more parents need to hear your story. And absolutely done. and then i gotta come back we gotta talk about submissive wives because we win it we out here winning we get oh yeah oh yeah are we definitely gonna talk about that for sure for sure <laughs> <laughs> all right you have a good one all right thank you you too good day uh, good day bye right, bye-bye bye